What's up, freaks? This is Steve Does, episode number 13. 13. This is a live broadcast on health, fitness, training, nutrition, peak freak style. What are you struggling with when it comes to weight loss, fitness, training, health, and nutrition? That's what it's all about. Steve Does, episode number 13. This week, we're talking about different questions or even you could say excuses that come in throughout the week. Today, it's about, I don't have time to work out. What should I do? Or eating healthy just tastes so plain, how can I spice up my healthy eating? And then there were other questions about what is my ideal weight and is there such a thing? So if you have any questions, comments, pull them up. I have you on a second screen down here. We can talk about it. You can comment on what we're talking about or just ask a completely different question. Oh, we got some visitors. All right, well, that woke us up a little bit. Let's get back to this. While I recover from that with my, since we're talking nutrition, fitness, I get back with my Herbalife shake. Herbalife pre-workout, about to get to some lifting in. So, Steve Does is a live show for anyone struggling with getting results with your in your exercise, your diet, your weight loss program, where I share with you the unique, no bullshit, in the trenches, peak freak approach to our training systems, our educational eating guidelines, so that you will know how to train, you'll know how to eat, and you will know how to lose weight and achieve results in the real world, because that's what it's all about. We train different, we eat different, we act different, we are freaking different, we are peak freaks. We are learning about these unique training systems, a weight loss strategy, nutritional discipline, educational eating. Ask your questions now, put them down in the comments. I'll be on a second screen here, a live feed if you have any questions. There we go. All set up. So let's get rolling. Put your questions down there. Just looking on, see if we have any other questions. Put them in the comments. We will talk about it. So one of the questions came in today was, well, first, you know, usually we try to cover at least one training type of question and at least one nutrition type of question so that we're covering all the bases. And when it comes... Down to it, that's what it's, this, this Steve does all about. The training, the nutrition, all of that good stuff. Just trying to get the camera set up a little better here. All right, so to, what, what came in was a, a question about having enough time to exercise. Now, first off, you know that in the peak freak world, in the peak freak world, everyone has this, in, in the real world, everyone has the same amount of freaking hours in a day. Everyone's got 24 hours in a day. One of the most common excuses for not freaking exercising is, is the lack of time. It's crazy. Between work and commuting and chores and the kids, they got soccer and they're off from school. They have school. They're off from school. They have this. They have that. Different social events and then eating and planning your eating and then you didn't get enough sleep. So there's just no time for exercise. We hear it all the freaking time. There's, there's no denying that, that life is obviously freaking busy and your calendar is full if you're just... You know, every, everyone's got a busy freaking day. Life is freaking busy. Life is crazy. But you know that you need some for, form of physical training, some freaking exercise, because you know it's good for you in so many freaking ways. But usually it's the first thing to take the back seat in someone's day, in someone's schedule. So now how can you find time to make it exercise and training a priority in your day? You need to find the time is what you need to do, first of all. And sometimes not as much about finding time as it is about just creating time and controlling your day, controlling your schedule, being in control of your fucking life, really. Because you, you can't pull time out of thin air. You can't add extra hours to the freaking day, but you can rearrange the schedule and cut out the non-essential bullshit that you have going on in your day that you're wasting time on and not getting your high priority stuff done, like taking care of yourself. There's no point in building that empire if you're not taking care of yourself. So you need to create that time, create it. Because you'd be surprised how much time you waste 
during the day doing doing bullshit when you can be using that time for better things like your exercise or your training routine. So find the time in your day and make it a priority. And th- here's a couple of different ways you could do it. First thing is re- reset your alarm a little early in the morning. Maybe first thing in the morning is going to work better for you. Oh, I'm not a morning person. Enough of that bullshit fucking excuse. I'm not a morning person. Who the hell's a morning person? What does that even mean? I'm not a morning person. Enough of that bullshit. So if you know after work, you got to run around and do all this other, other stuff and that's the only time you place you can create time is earlier in the morning. Get up a little freaking earlier. Get your ass out of freaking bed. Stop hitting the motherfucking snooze button on your alarm clock. Reset your alarm to 30 or 40 or 60 minutes earlier than you normally get up. Oh my God, you might have to get up at 4 a.m. You know, to, to not die of a heart attack in a few years. That sounds like a good fucking trade-off to me. Doesn't it sound, sound good to you? So mornings for some people is just the best time of day to work out. Once you get that done, the rest of your day is just easy. So by the, you know, the end of the day, sometimes you might feel you're too tired to go to the gym. But after you get, make sure you're getting to sleep on time and hydrating the night before, getting your workout clothes either ready or even go to sleep in that shit. Or you're probably already, you're a peak freak. You're probably sleeping butt ass naked. So you can just throw your workout clothes on when you get up. So hop up, get dressed, get your freaking uh, small, tiny little meal in you and get your ass to your training session. Or if you have to do it that day at home or whatever the hell your, you know, whatever your schedule is for that day, get the rest. So you wake up with tons of energy to start off the day with some training, some exercise. So set the alarm early, go to sleep earlier, set the alarm early and get that shit done first thing in the morning before your day even starts. So my most productive part of my day is before the sun comes up. By the time that motherfucker comes up, my day is, com- is pretty much complete. I've already done enough of that day to call it a complete day because you could get so much shit done in that time. Get your ass up earlier. Stop making excuses about this morning person bullshit. Get it up a little earlier than usual and make it part of your daily routine to maybe fit that in before the day gets started. And that's just if it fits the schedule for it. Not that you have to do it first thing in the morning, but that works for a lot of people. That's some of our busiest sessions in, in the gym, in our boot camp and boxing sessions is the 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. sessions. That's just the way it is. That's some of the busiest times. And... Get your stuff set up the night before. Prepare the night before. Go to sleep on time. Hydrate the night before. And don't hit the fucking snooze button when you get up. Maybe even hold yourself accountable by like joining a boot camp program. So that's going to force you to have to get up because now you now have workout partners or, and, and gym freaking freaks that are going to hold you accountable for it. And they're waiting for your ass in the gym. And you know they're going to let you hear it if, if you don't do it. Also... Then you could just, even besides actual training, you could find time for activity, for extra exercise, extra activity, all different times of the day. It could be on your lunch break. You know, you, you probably, first you probably just go two, two feet down, down to the office, down the office and, and eat at your desk or at like a break room or some shit. Or you drive 15 minutes to go to some stupid ass place to go sit and eat for 15, 20 minutes and drive another 15, 20 minutes to come back just wasting your freaking time. Why not use that lunch hour or whatever time it is, however you're, you know, this is, we're talking about a different variety of days that might be out there, just trying to cover all the freaking bases. Use your lunch hour. It's a perfect opportunity to fit in some, some activity, maybe even a quick short workout. And because it's not going to, you're not eating for a fucking hour. It's not happening. And then you're talking about, oh, be all sweaty and this and that. You'll figure it out. You'll adapt and overcome and you will figure that shit out. I guarantee you. Even if it's just a fast, long walk, you know, after you go eat, before you go eat and after you eat something, it could be anything we're talking about, but you could even get a full workout in. Bring your gym clothes. Bring your bring your 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 shoes so you could go for a walk maybe during your during your break at least to get that extra activity. And we're talking about either you're getting your workouts in or just extra activity or both. You know, in addition to your workout, why not? Then you want you don't have time because you got to spend time with your family, spend time with your kids. So what will you do? You'll take them, drive out to I don't know a movie, or you'll you'll drive out to some who knows some stupid ass place. You'll go, or you'll take them out to eat and go waste some time going out to eat. Screw that. Use your family time as exercise freaking time. Get the whole freaking family in on it. It's hard to, when you're doing, you're doing some training with your kids and trust me, I do it all the time. It is pretty fucking hard to quit when you're sitting right there with your little monsters and they just keep going and looking at you, who's their hero and you're ready to quit. That's sometimes your best training partners is your freaking kids. They will motivate you like a motherfucker when, when, when you think you're going to quit because you can look at them. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. That's why you're probably training one of the reasons you're training in the first place. So don't say it's because of the time of your kids because you can make time and just work out with your kids. Make them, make them part of the activity. And 
No matter what their age is, they could benefit. I guarantee they could benefit from more physical activity. And especially considering the, the, the childhood overweight and obesity numbers and rate that's out there, protect your kids from that shit. Why, why let them have an unhealthy lifestyle and you're going to try and change your lifestyle? Bring them all on board. Make them all part of it. Make them part of the process. It's only going to help keep you more accountable. And it's just setting a good being a good role model to your kids. So protect your kids from that weight gain by showing them the, the what an active lifestyle and a healthy lifestyle looks like and include them in your freaking workouts. So on your next family night, instead of watching a movie or playing video games or, or, or doing some board game or something, sure, that stuff is cool, but not if you don't have your, if you didn't get your workouts in already. That stuff is after. That shit is after. Maybe then instead, go hiking, go riding a, a bikes, Go roll, rollerblading, whatever the hell it is you do. Go play basketball. Throw a freaking frisbee around. Some shit. Do backflips into a pool nonstop. Some shit like that. Go swimming. Active. Keep it active. And now this could, you could, we're talking about this could either be to create your actual workout or in addition to your workout. Either way. So, next. You need to realize... This fitness, health, fitness, nutrition journey is a freaking marathon and not a sprint. So a little bit at a time, every little bit's going to help. All these little things we're talking about, sure, a lot of them sound like little things. But you put a whole bunch of freaking little things together, you have one big fucking thing. And that's going to lead to some great results. And so set your goals knowing that in mind. Don't think when you know that, that you're having to kind of in this crazy, hectic schedule because, you know, you're just busier than the rest of the world, right? That, that you're going to be... I don't want to say half-assing it, but you're just modifying a real exercise routine. It might take a little longer to get to your goals. So find the time. Make it happen. You might, you might not be able to exercise in an hour every day. So time crunch. Figure it out. Maybe you could fit in a half hour a day or a half hour twice a day or maybe 10 minutes three times a day, 10 minutes four times a day. That's still going to get you some results. Take you know all the usual stuff that you hear. Park far away and take the stairs or whatever. Take the stairs, all stuff. Sure, it's going to help. It's extra activity. Those are little tiny, tiny, tiny pieces that are going to add up. But there's just so much stuff you could do with your body weight in such a short amount of time. In a, either at the outside, at the park, wherever it is, during the lunch breaks, before work, after work, you can always squeeze it in. At least getting, I'd say, a minimum 30 minutes a day is, you know, to get, start getting some results. You could go all the way up to 60 minutes a day and try to get it in. If it's only 30 minutes, definitely five days, six days a week, even more, even seven days of just activity. Because... When you do exercise, though, especially this short amount of time, you need to make that shit count. So if you're only going for a walk every time, is that better than nothing? Sure. But is that going to get you to your goals? Probably not too quickly. So you're going to work out for only 20 minutes. You better make that shit a killer freaking 20 minutes. Some high intensity interval training where, where the interval you're going to burn, you know, when doing interval training, you're going to burn more calories in less time and you're going to continue burning calories throughout the day. So when you're working then when you're working with like a trainer or in a session, make sure you're making every freaking second of that count. Pushing yourself to your limit within, you know, being safe and smart, not overdoing it. But take advantage of that, that when that expertise and when that, when that surrounding, when you're surrounded by like-minded people and you're taking a session and then take that with you and, and take that mindset with you when you have to do it on your own, you have to squeeze in between. So Maybe you have a short commute to work. Why not ride your bike to work or walk to work? So what? You're going to get there sweaty and stinky and smell. You'll figure that shit out. I guarantee you'll figure that shit out. You'll go take a, a, a bird bath in the sink in the, in the bathroom if you have to. You'll do whatever the hell you got to do. You will figure that shit out. So you, have, you could take your bike to work. You could walk. You could jog. Do whatever the hell you got to do. Figure it out. There's always time for extra activity. All right. One of the next questions was, keep, how can I eat health? Eat? They tell me, I hear it all the time. Eating healthy is so boring. It's so plain. And I've, I've addressed this many times, so I'm not going to go too deep into the, to the just quit being a bitch little side of it, you know, where, about, where, where we're asked, what could I add? What kind of spices and seasonings? Listen, I'm not, a, I'm not a fucking chef. I pick things up, I punch things, and I create things, and I change freaking lives, but I'm not a damn chef, so I don't know all the details of that stuff. But I do know when it comes to health-wise, certain spices are going to be more beneficial to you than others, so... Where, what kind of foods are you going to put them in? You figure that out. You figure out what works for you. Different seasoning, spices, of course, there's shit. The first thing is, you already know I say it all the time. You've been eating long enough for flavor, for fun, you know, for enjoyment, for loneliness, for sadness, for you're by yourself, you're in a group, you're at a party, you weren't invited to the party, you find all those reasons to eat on both sides of the spectrum, you're always finding reasons to eat. Now it's time to eat 
for fuel, for results, for goals, for weight loss, for your kids, for your grandchildren, for your fucking unborn grandchildren. That's what it's time to start eating for. But we're going to say, okay, we're still going to help you out with some spices and some things to add to it to taste a little bit better in your food. So spicing things up, like basically in your healthy eating, but not just some basic stuff like whatever, salt or whatever. We're talking about some spices that are going to give you an actual boost, an ex- actual health benefit. Now, first, before we go into these spices, some of them are going to have some health benefits and ways that they're going to help you out with whatever, metabolism and all this other shit. But just realize that's this amount of the, 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 the results. So that's like a tiny piece of the puzzle. We're just, again, we're adding these little things all together. So don't think, oh, now I can put all these spices in. Now I could just eat a bunch of shit, put the spices on my fucking pizza, and I'm going to start losing weight. No, this is just in addition, a supplement. A fucking spice that you're adding on to your dedication, your discipline, your nutritional discipline, your educational eating, and your hard motherfucking work. That's what this stuff is doing. So, sure, spices can add flavor. They're going to improve taste. And we want to start choosing some of the even the better spices to give a little powerhouse kick, a little real boost to your food, a little tiny extra piece, a little tiny extra piece of the puzzle. So, of course, salt and pepper, you know all that, the, the, the bullshit. But I'm talking about the next level of spices. Some spices are from, spices are made from like roots and berries and seeds uh, of plants and herbs come from just the plant leaves. So they're used for the flavors and spices and herbs to, in, they're, they're rich in the plant compounds so they can prevent disease, they can reduce damage, they can, you know, damage caused by free radicals and fight inflammation and they're also used to season the food. So if it can make it taste better and give you health benefits like boom, add some of this shit in. So you stop bitching and complaining that, oh my God, my chicken's so fucking plain. Get used to it. I eat chicken like seven days a week, sometimes two, three times a day. And sometimes there's nothing, not shit on it, but just there's just chicken on the chicken. So stop complaining. But we're still going to help you out. So using these type of spices are going to make you cut back on adding extra salt and sugar and to, you know the unhealthy fats into your diet because this little taste that the spices are going to add a little flavor for you. Just to help you with that little bit of lacking nutritional discipline where you're worried too much about the flavor and all that other stuff. So there's tons of health benefits from eating. There, there are supplements for a lot of these, these spices that I'm about to say, but you're always going to, obviously, it's going to be better from getting them fresh or the dried, like a dried version of it to go with your food. So use this stuff as an experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment. Start putting this shit in different things. Go ahead and put some cayenne pepper in your, in your plain Greek yogurt. You never know. See how that shit works out for you. I don't know. Whatever. Figure it out. So practice with it, experiment with it. And so here are a couple of basic, not basic, but next level spices. You know cinnamon. Cinnamon is, is a good one. It's sweet. It's, it's sugary free. It's, it's low in calories. It can be added to, to foods, to drinks. You could do, put it in your baking, your cooking, whatever. High in antioxidants from its cinnamaldehyde is, is what it's from. Cinnamon is a powerhouse when it comes to fighting inflammation, lowering cholesterol, and reducing triglycerides. Also... It's shown to lower blood sugar, lower, slow the breakdown of your carbs, and improve sensitivity to insulin. So it could also be good in a, in a diabetic diet. So cinnamon is your first one. Boom, right there. Quick one. And that's an easy one. That's an easy one that makes stuff taste better. Add flavor to some of the food. Next is cardamom. Cardamom is, is a sweeter spice also. It's used in like with pumpkin flavoring, and it contains compounds that can kill bacteria, support your immune system, reduce inflammation, and... People use it to treat various di- like digestive freaking problems they have with like nausea, heartburn, irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, and intestinals, c- constipated, gas, diarrhea, all that stuff. It can help out with that. It's also used for coughs and colds and headaches and high blood pressure. So these are spices at your foods that can give you an extra little freaking boost. And you know we're huge on immune systems because we train fucking hard and we party freaking hard. So we need to work- keep our immune system strong as a fucking bull. Cumin is the next one. Cumin. And there's cumin and there's curcumin. We're going to get that next. So they sound familiar, but they are different. And they used to, they're used in a lot of Indian and South American and Middle Eastern dishes. Like food, they are rich. They have a lot of iron and it's been used for hundreds and hundreds of years for, to help with digestion and toothaches and things like that. So some people even... Say, I mean, whatever, some studies even show, and what does every study mean? Whatever, studies are a study. They show it can also support weight loss. So now curcumin is what's in turmeric. You probably heard of turmeric. That's one of the the ones that I use on a daily basis. 
It makes your, the food kind of yellowy or whatever. Even there's even stuff you there's uh, stuff people put on their arm. There are injuries and stuff. I've even seen people use it where it's that yellowy stuff. You see that on their arms, whatever, or an elbow, something like that. It is a powerhouse spice. It's got antioxidants, reduces inflammation, relieves pain. It helps with liver problems, digestive health, helps with arthritis, and even studies, some studies show it could prevent heart attacks. So a diet that has that is going to also, there have been studies that show it can slow or slow down Alzheimer's disease. So it, it also can stop the growth of breast and colon and stomach cancer cells. So it's a boom. That is, it is a, curcumin is a huge powerhouse of a spice and it's in turmeric is really what it's in that's what curcumin is is in the turmeric then capsaicin is you're gonna that's in the basically cayenne pepper is a spice this what's in cayenne pepper that's what you're getting out of it so trying to lose weight it's supposedly can help reduce your appetite boost your metabolism because and because you see it's in a lot of weight loss supplements so but always the fresh version of it's going to be a little better and it does have great Weight loss effects for people who normally, you know, people who normally eat spicy food, that's always going to help boost your weight loss. But it also can fight cancer, keep your, bl- your blood vessels healthy, reduce pain, and lower blood pressure. So, bam, these are like some powerhouse stuff right there. Who's there? Jen Scarber. I thought she was, I thought Jen Scarber gave me the middle finger, but there's a thumbs up. Sometimes there's like a different version of those hand, hand signals in there. It looked like a middle finger, but it's a thumbs up which from Jen Scarper. Then... The last one we're going to say is cocoa. Yes, that doesn't mean go eat a bunch, of, a bunch of fucking chocolate and stuff your face. But yes, cocoa, which is in chocolate, can it be good for you? Yes, with a high percentage of cocoa. Like chocolates have cocoa, obviously, but they also have fat and sugar. So there's ways, to, ways you can get it because it is rich in antioxidants and lower blood pressure and increases your good cholesterol, reduces your bad cholesterol, and improves just the health of the blood vessels and helps with diabetes. So that's another one. But always before, and now again, I just mentioned these, whatever I just mentioned, five or six of these different spices, just know that this shit is not a, 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 like a, one, a breakthrough. This is not like, oh my God, that's all I have to do and I'm going to get results. Fuck no. This is just in addition to your hard work, your training, remaining a positive 10 in your mindset, getting your ass to the boot camp boxing class is a minimum of four, four to five times a week, and following the educational eating guidelines of the Peak Physique program. This is in addition to that. This is not going to like be any big thing by itself this is just in addition to all that just to help maybe take things to that next level and give you a little boost and a little help is not going to hurt that's for sure unless anything you're taking if you, before you take any supplement really even spices and stuff like that they can interact with them prescription drugs so if you're on any of that shit find out your doctor of course this is no medical freaking advice do i look like a fucking doctor do you no know? Although I can probably, I probably, we probably do save more lives than, than, than most of the doctors out there on a regular basis. But that's besides the point. That's a whole nother episode. Next question was about the ideal weight. And we get it all the time. How much should I weigh? How much should I weigh? How much should I weigh? What's my weight? What's a good weight for my age? What's a good weight for my height? There's no fucking answer to that. There is real no answer to that. Pretty, chances are pretty good. You, you have a good picture in your mind of what you'd like to weigh or what you'd like to look like or what you would like to feel like, even more important, and what you would like to think about yourself, your self-image. That's a little more important than the, the fucking number on the scale. What, what should you weigh? You should weigh whatever's going to make you fucking happy, whatever's going to make you feel confident and have a good you know, self-image. That's the weight you should weigh. I don't, whatever that weight is, maybe it's not lean and ripped and, and, a, and a skinny little, little, little bony little thing. That, that, that's... That shit ain't going to help you anyway. That shit ain't good anyway. But maybe it's what you weighed back when you graduated college or when at your wedding. Maybe that's the weight you should be because that's the weight you felt most confident. You felt the best at. And since you've likely put on some pounds from then, you probably wish you could lose. Then you need to get back to that shit, obviously. So maybe you're comparing yourself to people around you or people you see on TV or magazines that, that paintbrush all that shit. Or they're sticking a bunch of needles in their ass. Or they're starving themselves for like months and then the next day you see them, they're fucking ballooned out. But you think you want to look like that person in the magazine. A lot of that shit is just bullshit. Don't even, don't even go off that. Worry about yourself. You are in competition with yourself. You're looking to be the best version of yourself. You're looking to just feel good, look good, and, and, and just have a good attitude, a good positive mental attitude. That's how much you should fucking weigh. That's how much. So don't be influenced by the bullshit TV and media and of what your vision of the ideal weight for you should be because of what some douchebag on TV says or thinks 
or does, or even some people in your, in your world about what they're telling you you should do or what you should look like or what you should weigh. Fuck that. You should weigh whatever the fuck you want to weigh, really, to tell you the truth. But you should have some good goals, some high aiming goals to go after. Don't just say, oh, see, I could weigh whatever I look like. You probably know which, a, a good idea of what that means to you. So don't bullshit yourself and say, oh, I'm just, you know, you can be happy where you are, but you always need and should want to improve and freaking get better. So that's, what you need to, that's the way you really need to think about how much should you weigh. Most people have just an un- unrealistic idea of what their ideal weight should be. They don't even know. And is there even such thing as an ideal weight? No, there's not. All those charts, that's all bullshit by probably someone that was overweight that made that shit. Because the second your birthday changes, now it, it puts you into a different category or whatever. Come on. That's, that's, some of that, most of that shit is, that is a basic guideline. Not even a guideline. I don't even know what it is. You know what? I was going for the, the police department. Probably in the, the, the same physical shape and now, maybe even better. I was like 23 years old going for these police department here in Rockland County, and they told me I was obese. I had to go to cardiologist to have them do all kinds of uh, sonogram on my heart like do with pregnant women to look at my heart. I had to do all these different tests and exams and all this other shit because I was considered obese on the police height and weight standard. So when you start thinking about what should I weigh, just remember that story. You should weigh whatever the fuck you, you feel good at and you have energy to play with your kids and your grandkids and you can be running around and do things you like to do and not sitting on the couch like a lazy ass and you're having fun and you like the way you look and you're not afraid to go to the beach and put your little fucking thong bikini on and all that other shit. So, because you know, be, you could say, oh, I'm happy. You might be overweight or obese and say, okay, then I'm just happy the way I am. You know, most likely you could still be a confident person and a generally happy person, but you know probably just from the health reasons, the negative health conditions you could possibly you could have just from free, being overweight, you probably know that that's not where you should be. So still just for the health reasons and energy reasons and longevity reasons, you should take care of that shit most likely to take you to that next level and be, okay, if you're happier, then we're going to make you even more happy. We're going to make you happier. So do you have to be lean and ripped with a six pack? Fuck no, you don't have to be. You just have to be Happy, healthy, have energy and, and do things the way you should be doing them. Be smart about what you're eating and not overdo it with shit like that. Or maybe your goal is to be lean, ripped and, and six pack. That's your, up to you. What, what does it mean to you? So there's, there's tons of ways you could there's do it. We've talked about it on previous episodes. Also, you can check it out with like BMI, weighing yourself, body weight, body mass index, your BMI and circumference measurements. All that is fine. But you already know we've did another one where you, how do you measure it without those weight, without, without the scale and without all this other stuff. It's how you feel, how your clothes fit, the compliments you're getting from maybe people around you, but more the compliments you're giving yourself in your fucking brain. Your self-image is the number one thing of what you should weigh. And you know when you're not where you want to be or where you should be. So where you should be, you're gonna be, you'll are gonna be, you be guided eventually to. You might think, oh, I should be 140 pounds. You get to 140 pounds, you get there, you're like, I don't like the way I look at 140 pounds. I don't feel good at 140 pounds. I'm still not ready for that fucking thong bikini. So you're going to get to that goal, and what are you going to do? You're going to reassess the situation, just like any battle. Right on the battlefield, you win, a, you, you, you win in that small victory, and then you reassess, and you, and you go for the next goal. Every goal that you achieve is just a starting point to your next goal. I don't care what it is or how far you are or what kind of record, fucking world record you're setting. Every goal is just a starting point to your next goal. That's just the way it is. So if you have any other questions, put them down there in the comments. We can answer them. I'll answer them right there. I'll answer each question individually. I will personally answer them. So put them down there or you can put some questions each week for the Steve Does episodes and we will get to them. So I will talk to you later. No excuses.